the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld the glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Do you have a translation called um, PTP? Do you have it? If you don't have it, don't worry. I'm just going to skip it. If you don't have it, TPT. If you have it, fine. But if you don't, don't worry. I'm just... Tonight, I want to... I want to center my brief teaching, Building Intimacy with God. Building intimacy with God. Building intimacy with God. Tell your neighbor this year, turn to your neighbor and say, This year I will build intimacy with God. One of the things that will help you this year achieve whatever you want to achieve is to be in a close walk with, with God. I've always said it. I found out that shockingly enough, a lot of people don't understand what spirituality is all about. A lot of people. And to one of these days, I'm going to post something. But let me just give a brief undertone to what I wanted to post last week. I said that the African man the natural man who lives diabolism, traditionalism, that has to do with one thing occultic, using something to find something or something to get something. When he comes into Christianity, he wants to practice Christianity just like the same way he used to practice. And hence, I make bold to say that a lot of people do not understand what spirituality is all about. When you build intimacy with God, there are certain things that Sometimes we teach from the pulpit to make us look as spiritual as we should look or sound. But I personally believe that that is not the general route or process of believers. I want you to understand me. I would not attack anybody, no ministry no person, not myself and not even the people who started before us because they've done a wonderful job in giving us what we carry today. I will be one of those persons who will come out openly and say that our fathers in the faith are trying. They have tried. They've not just tried. They've done absolutely wonderful. But I'll say this. In as much as this, my generation is in search of power, in search of depth, in search of whatsoever language you will call it, or whatsoever word you will use to describe it. We should be careful when we leave the boundaries of spirituality into the boundaries of spiritism. Jesus clearly said that whoever will worship him, will worship him in spirit and what? Good. But spirituality is a simple thing. Spirituality is not complicated. But these are the days we practice Christianity. It's just that we put Jesus in 
But most of the things we do is almost as if we are in the bush consulting one deity or oracle. So you have to go, before you get this, you have to go into the bush for seven market days. Then when you bring it to Christianity, before you hear the Lord, you have, the sun has to rise and set seven times. Without that, you cannot see God. How is it in the Bible? It was never in the Bible. We'd never be in the Bible. But we see some of those things and we want to, you know, when we hear those things, the next thing that comes out of our mouth is deep, 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 deep. And instead of taking us forward, it is bringing us backward. I believe that deep-rooted Christianity and spirituality should be seen in various things. Number one, in being led of the Spirit. So what is being led of the Spirit? Being directed and counseled by the Spirit of God on a daily basis, on the minute basis. Are you listening to me? Yes. That's what true spirituality is. True spirituality is not that when you now enter inside your room and then you face the wall and you start talking to the wall and then when someone comes in, say, no, you calm down, wait, you don't understand, I'm speaking with Jesus. I mean, you can ask me a question, I'm right there, I'm speaking with Jesus too. So it must not, I must not hear from Jesus until I face that wall. If not, Jesus must not appear in a particular place before I speak with Jesus now. And with Jesus on the go. Is that not true? Because he lives in me. Does he live in you? Yeah. So he doesn't meet me at one particular time. So he's with me all day. He's with me all night. I think that deep spirituality should be rooted in purity. So when you see someone who is spiritual, one of the first things you will see when he's deep, when you want to know that someone is spiritual, is that he's pure. Purity. I don't count tongues. I don't count tongues as deep spirituality, unfortunately. Another thing is, it's also seen in simplicity. Someone says simplicity. You know, spirituality does not complicate issues. Simple. We have received a simple gospel. Okay. It's also seen in love. So, these are the days you will see people who will t- teach you the four elements of this, five elements of this, five elements of this, but naturally you are wicked people. So, how do you now merge the two character. Someone who is teaching you the depths, the mysteries of this and this, but is very wicked. So how do you merge things like this? You see, it doesn't go hand in hand. Two of us. Exactly. So you must love. Love is, love, when you want to be spiritual, you have to have love. Without love, you don't even have the father in you. Because he that loveth not, knoweth not, so how do we know that you know God? It's not by the mysteries you teach because you can go and download. You can, also think, you can also teach things that are not the scripture. But for us to know that you, for us to know, that you know God is by love. Because it is love that reveals who Christ is. And building intimacy with God. Let's come back to that topic now. Now, how many of you have found out that the people closest to us are the ones who tend to know us? Is that true? The people who are closest to us, they're the ones who know our flaws, our weaknesses, our strengths, our mannerism, how we talk, how we move, you know, what we can anticipate. They can anticipate our next movement because they are, they are what? They are close to us. They know how to roll their eye, our eyes, you know, all those things. When people are close to you, they can study you, study you to the point they can mimic you to an almost accurate pattern. An almost accurate pattern. Thank you, Pastor Chine. God bless you. The Lord is helping you. But the funny thing is this. In most cases, when it comes to God, most people believe a lie that they really cannot know God. 
Because they think that God is this magnificent being that cannot be known. You know, his magnitude is it's undescribable. So how can you know how can you know this God? Because they come from the point of their outside. God is big. God is huge. I can't know him. It sounds logical anyways. But it is scripturally untrue. A person can know God. A person can know God. And you, you cannot know God until you come close to God. You cannot know God until you do what? You come close to God. I'm, I'm teaching. I don't want to preach. I want you to understand first. I don't want you to just have a motivation to pray. And this teaching is not the one that when after teaching now, I'll, I'll, you start praying for fire. You don't need fire in this one. Forget about fire falling down. Holy fire, born upon my heart. You will still born, but wait. You need to go close to God first. You know, most of this fire, fire, fire. But you know God well. What fire are you looking for? What fire are you really looking for? Now, let me give you an example. When you don't have money, food becomes a problem. When you don't have money, they ask you, the first thing that happens to you is that, oh boy, I they hate you. Three of us. Food becomes what? Food becomes what? Yes, food becomes a problem. Eating becomes a problem. Because in most cases you think. But when you have money, it becomes a problem to food. What do I mean? When you have abundance, you can provide for yourself. Sometimes when they even put that food, it's poised because you're not paying attention to it. Your problem is no longer food. You can afford to, sometimes they will remind you to eat. But when you don't have money, no, you cannot forget food. You always remember it. Even if they want to go, you say, wait, you are forgetting something. Food. You see, there are certain things that we unspiritually or unhealthily crave for just because we have not come in contact with God. And then you start making it a priority. You are praying, you are praying, you are praying, you are praying. You are so desperate for it. And that's where the problem comes. When Satan sniffs desperation, there is trouble. You can do anything to get that power. You can do anything to get this. If Satan sniffs it, there's trouble. But these are the things that can be gotten on the platter that are released by the sheer presence of God. So you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost shall come upon you. See, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you shall do what? Receive power. The problem we have is that we think that you now have to ask for the power when the Holy Spirit is already I've read the scripture, read the scripture, read the scripture, read the scripture, read it again and again and again and again. And I found out that the, if only we spend time enjoying who God is, building relationship and our knowledge of who God is. Instead of seeking for miracles and seeking for wonders, you yourself, you become a wonder. Nobody becomes a friend of God and is not a wonder. Just your life, simple. Now, 
How do you go to get into the miraculous? It's very simple. The miraculous is very simple. Following the instructions of God. Because God will tell you to do things, apply things that are outside of natural laws, outside of human reasoning. Now, when you do that and believe God and trust him and do that, exactly what is called what? Miracles. These are things that you call wonders. Sometimes when you are even doing it, you are not even seeing it as a prayer point because what you just see it is that obeying an instruction. You don't pray. Are you listening to me? But sometimes because of the way we've been taught, we are now craving and craving and craving. Your dad is a millionaire and you are the person who will inherit what he has. You already have what, your, what he has is already your own. And your problem is to sit on your father's seat. Your problem in this life is just to sit on your father's seat. One day you go and kill your father to sit on that seat. Or you, you go for a revolt. Three of us. But when you are busy doing things, obeying in instruction, one of these days he will even tell you to oversee a meeting on my behalf. Have you not sat on that seat? One day he will tell you, see, I'm, I'm even tired of all these things. Now just come and take, just be bringing me feedback now. I don't no need to even come and sit. Let me just be resting. When you go, come back and give me feedback. But out of an impure desperation, you might go to connect with a friend to kill your father. See, you understand who God is. You know who God is really. Your life will be different. Your prayer point will be different. Most of these people, now listen carefully now, I want to tell you this. Most of these men that we have learned their life did not get into prayer as a means of blackmailing God to bring about miracles. They got into prayer because they enjoyed having fellowship with the Father. Go and read their stories properly. Someone will say, I can't go. How can I go one hour without talking to God? You see that that thing is not because he wants to perform a sign or a wonder. But because he cannot go one hour or two hours without talking to his friend. And with that kind of commitment, then the impossible is nothing. I want you to understand. That's why I said I want to teach. What I want to teach is so that you understand clearly. So you don't be moved by a wave of undue Now God is so great mighty large vast that there is always something you will discover about God throughout your lifetime. You will always keep discovering something about God till you die. Two of us. Yes. We may not be able to know everything. You will not be able to know everything about God. But there is a reality and there is a statement of fact and there is a truth somewhere. And that truth is you can always know God better. You might not know everything, but you can always know God better. Now, when you go through the scripture, you will find out that it is consistent with God making effort to reveal himself to man. God has consistently made efforts to reveal himself to man. That's why the scripture we read in the beginning said, and the word became flesh. That was God. Is that not true? And dwelt what? Among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. That was just God trying to make man know him better. 
So now when we see Jesus, remember when I was talking about the Son of Man and the Son of God, that when Jesus, became, when Jesus came on earth, he came as the Son of God and the Son of Man. So he came there represent. so that when you see Jesus, you have seen God. But also when you now see Jesus, he came as a representative in the form of, God, in the form of a man, so that when you see Jesus, you know, the scripture called him the second Adam. So he came that when you now see him and the things he did on earth, you will see Jesus and say, okay, this is the list or this is the representation of who the new creation should look like. So when you see him, you have seen God. So God has made himself closer to man. You can touch him, you can feel him. That's why when he was now living, he said, I would not leave you alone. I will not leave you like orphans. I will send you someone. And that person I'm going to send to you will not just say things of, on his own. He will, he will represent me. He will speak my mind. He will tell you what I want. So God is consistent. So that is the mind of God. The mind of God is that we know him. But very few of us want to know him, but we want his power. Very few of us want to be his friend. We want what he has in his hands. Very few of us want his heart. We just want miracles. You eat today. Will you eat tomorrow? Hebrews chapter 11, chapter 1, verse 1 and 2 says God who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophet has in these last days spoken to us by his son. So God is in, he's interested in building closeness with us. The essence of my teaching tonight is that 2023 don't walk through the streets of 2023 alone. Walk with somebody. It is not just your best friend. You don't just need a human being around you. You need somebody you can trust. And if there's anybody you can trust in this life, it's God. He said, I am that what I am. That thing was a statement of his integrity. I am the Lord, I change it not. You can trust him. If he says he's this, he's that. Let me tell you the truth. There are battles in life that when you go into, by the sheer fact of who you came with, you will win that. If you are going into an event, Listen carefully now. I want to ask you. If you are going into an event, there's a 5,000 or... Okay, let me give you an example. There's a presidential banquet. Strictly on IV. Only 250 people allowed in that hall. And the host of that event saw you on the road and said, come, let's go. Regardless of the bouncers, if you are working with that host inside that hall, you have gained access. True or false? Why? By the virtue of who came with you. I wonder why you want to enter 2023, succeed in 2023, when you don't want to go with the creator himself. He must be that close. He's not an oracle that you just go and consult. And when you don't have need for him, you leave the oracle there. You need to come in close relationship with him if you want this year to be wonderful. Because one of his attributes is that he knows the end from the beginning. So he knows where the blocks, where the bridges, where the roadblocks are in 2023. Walk with him. He will before time give you another path. Even if it is a must that you will go through that road, you cannot go through that road alone. He'll be there. 
Say, yea, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I shall do what? Why? The Lord is my shepherd. That's the beginning. That's the beginning. Even if I must walk through dryness, I am confident because of who I am going with. Because who I'm going with will never allow me to be ashamed. Are you listening to me here? Is someone picking up what I'm saying this night? You will make a grave mistake this year if you don't make your relationship with the Father to be more intimate than it used to be. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 and 29. Say, Come to me, all ye who, are la- who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. He's interested. You cannot carry this baggage alone. He wants to lift some of those things from you. Sometimes people ask, man of God, don't you face difficulties? Don't you face challenges? Don't you face losses? Don't you face this? I don't face them alone. That's the difference. I don't face them alone. I am with one who is my comforter. He's not just my comforter. He's my guidance. He's not just my my guide. He's my helper. He's everything I need in a friend. I can trust him more than anybody. That's how I walk through life. I don't walk through life because I've gotten a PhD in this and this. Not because I've seen this and seen this one. It is because somebody is with me every single time. You think you have one man of God posted something about, about me. He said, look at this man. You think you, have, you, are, you are winning. On the third day he will rise again. People think that you have knocked me down. No, you cannot knock me down. The person I'm with, he died and on the third day he rose again. You cannot put my back on the floor for too long. Because that same power that raised Jesus from the dead <laughs> is at work in me. So I can't be down for too long. I fall, I shall rise. My enemies should know should, should not rejoice. <laughs> because I'm with somebody. I enter there with somebody. You know, when we talk about death, we don't understand. Death signifies the end of every struggle. Someone say end of every struggle. Yeah, that's what death signifies. And Jesus went through that and overcame. So it means that if he's with you, there is no struggle he cannot come out from. We don't understand. They said the power that raised him from the dead. So he over, he came out from nothing can ever see his end. That's what he means. He overcame death. So nothing can see his end. You know when you go to the scripture it says that death is the last enemy to be defeated. I want you to understand this thing. So he that defeated death, not cheated, he did not cheat death, he defeated death. And is with you this year. And you want to lose? And you think you can lose? The thing is that you trust your education more than Christ. You trust your you trust you see you trust your, your connection more than Christ. That is why when issues come up, instead of talking to the person who is closest to you, you place a call to Abuja. You are going to Abuja when the person that can give you solution is right there with you. You place a call to London. You place a call to Lagos. You wake up one morning and there is trouble in that house. The first thing you do is to go outside and start shouting. Whereas there is somebody right there with you in that room. What can they do that the one who is here with you can 
not do. Oh God, you don't know. You know, sometimes we see Jesus, we talk about the Holy Spirit, and we see why you think that maybe why you think that God is so far away from you is that when you now look, you say, God is too big, so he cannot fit inside my room, so he cannot be here. <laughs> Hello? Is that true? Yeah, God is too big, so he cannot be here. God is not here, so I'm talking to I don't even know how he's, he's, he can understand me, so this thing is a struggle for you to understand. Now, Jesus lives in you through the Holy Spirit. Through who? The Holy Spirit. Jesus lives in you. When you give your life to Christ, what you did actually is that you received Christ inside of you. So now he lives in you. That's why he said that I'm at the door of your heart. Doing what? Now, if you let him, what will he do? Yes. So when he comes in, he takes residence. And let me tell you, what Jesus takes in your life is permanent residence. He does not come and go. Well, someone does not understand me. Yet. He does not do what? Come and go. He's not never. <laughs> Transformer was born. Jesus is no longer there. No. He is in you and he's alive. Now, you must now engage in cultivating and making that relationship stronger and what? Stronger. That is where your strength lies as a believer. In how to make and engage that relationship to be stronger. That's the point I'm going to now. If you cultivate that relationship with Jesus, to be stronger, you have more edge in the world. But if you don't, you will have trouble. While I was preparing today, the Holy Spirit told me that the routine of fasting and the hours you spend in fasting, that's not where the power is. So, because sometimes you just fast for 40 days and you ask yourself, why is there no power made available then? It's because you are fasting, but there's no reality in what you're doing. The routine, that routine, that time, is not where the power is. Power is in relationship. Someone say relationship. Somebody say relationship. Now, let me give you an example. If you have a man, I want, I want to show you this wonderful example. If you have a man that you have worked with for 45 years, someone say 45 years, and you are about to die, and you have a son who is 25 years, who would you leave your inheritance from? Who? Okay. I thought it is the longer years who has, because 45 years has stayed with you more than your son. Oh. So it's relationship. Okay. I want you to understand this. Relationship. You know, we think that (laughs) believe me, believe me, One of the reasons why prayer has not changed a lot of people is that they are fixated on the time and the routine and not allowing conversation and presence change their lives. What did I just say? What did I just say? What did I just say? The reason why prayer has not changed a lot of people is because they're so fixed on time and routine that they've not allowed 
presence. Someone say presence. presence. Someone say presence. presence. They've not also allowed relationship. So their priority is time. Their priority is that I'm fasting for three hours. Their priority is that I am praying in the spirit for six hours. I am praying for 40 days. And they think that that is what changes their life. That is not what changes their life. I have a lot of teaching to do tonight. But let me give an, uh, an illustration here. Look up, look up to me here. I will trust the Holy Spirit to help me here. When you are at work with God and you are praying and you have a relationship with God, Let me go to Martha and Mary. These two knew who Jesus was. But Mary will always come to sit at his feet. Why? Because she understood that there is something about the presence of Jesus than just feeding Jesus to be happy. Martha was busy doing a lot of things, doing a lot of things. But Mary understood that if I sit at the feet of this man, that what comes out of his mouth, what comes out of his life, is the thing I need more than every other activity I'm doing in that place. You see, when Jesus is your friend, listen carefully, when Jesus is your friend, and you talk with Jesus regularly, and you enjoy relationship with Jesus regularly, what happens is that his sheer presence is a direct enemy to a lot of things that are in your life. And by the virtue of closeness, there are things that will automatically drop in your life. That's number one. If you on off all these lights now and you immediately turn on the light, the presence of light will give quick notice to darkness. True of us. Now let me tell you, when you are with Jesus, there are a lot of things coming out from his life that once he starts coming into your life, starts drawing them away. Presence and not time. Presence. You, do you need to take perfume to spray on your body when you are walking in a factory of perfume? Just by you staying there, give it time. When you come out, people will say, what perfume did you use? True or false? When you put yourself inside a pit and you come out, will people need to ask you where you went to? Have you forgotten that when we don't need to ask you whether you cooked with firewood? You just need to be around firewood. Is that not true? Presence. Not time. Not time. You must be intentional. Because when you start knowing who Jesus is, there is something about him that opens up your filthy state. Are you listening to me here? There's something about Jesus that opens up your state. And you know, when Peter met Jesus, he went to the floor and said, get away from me, for I'm a filthy man. And the presence of Christ, our persona is left bare. We see ourselves, but it doesn't stop there. When we follow him, he will change us. So why are people not changed, but they pray? Because they have not stayed with Jesus, really. They are just engaging in rituals. Just engaging in rituals. I'm coming. We have a lot of things to learn tonight. <laughs> right. 
When we talk about intimacy, what comes to your mind? Fellowship, yeah. What else comes to your mind? Closeness, yes. Close relationship, yes. You know, when we feel intimate, when you feel intimate connection with people, you experience some of these things, like connection. There's a real connection between you and us. Two of us. And then there is this assurance that you know this person. Two of us. And then there's also another one we call good feeling. So the person gives you good, you know, there are people that they give you good, bad vibes, right? So, but when you are with those persons, you feel good, you are, you are happy. I'm not saying you feel, you feel immoral, I'm saying you feel good. If when you are around people, the only thing that happens to you is that your sexual hormones are high, you are just dealing with lust. You're just dealing with lust, you need a lot to help you. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? Yeah. Yes. Because, for example, when you are with your, let me say, your, your siblings or your parents, you feel happy. You feel good. There's comfort. Someone say comfort. There's another thing we call safety. Now, when daughters are around their fathers, they feel secure. Two of us. is that if we can feel this with men it is extremely possible to feel this with God to feel secure to feel a connection to feel comfort with God it's not an impossible task it's not something left for angels it's something left for God from the beginning the Lord came down to have what? Fellowship with man. So it means that this was his plan from the get-go. He wants that fellowship. So it means that God misses that fellowship. That's why he comes down every in the cool of evening. So you see, it means that there is something God is missing there in heaven that he only gets from man. Where is the balance here? I'm teaching today. What will be your prayer point actually at the end of this day? Your prayer point at the end of this teaching would be, Lord, help me know you more. That's what intimacy is. It's not about fire. Forget about fire now, Lord. Help me know you more. Let me be your friend. Let me know you more. Take me into deeper waters. Deeper water is not science. It's showing me things about you I have not known. Open my eyes. My eyes are still blinded. I want to see things about you. Connect these scriptures to me. I want to understand what I read. Tell me what you meant in Jeremiah chapter 11. If you tell me, I will crave for Isaiah. Your words will be so pleasurable in my mouth. Have you seen somebody eat bitter leaf as though the person is eating watermelon? There's something they found in it. There's something they found in it. This is what happens. Sometimes you see people they say, ah, the word of God is so sweet to me. But you, when you read the word of God, it's like time bomb. Are you listening? Are you listening to me? Yes. They found something about the word of God. They found the life in the word of God. And they found out that for them to live, 
ah, they must appreciate this word. That's why you finally said that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Intimacy with God makes prayer pleasurable. It makes prayer less of a burden. So prayer time is no longer a forceful something. They'll start forcing you. Come and pray. So when it's time for prayer, you'll find something useful to be doing. Something you, have, you know you can still do after prayer. wake up to pray after 15, 15 minutes 10 minutes you don't know what to say let me ask you a question if your best friend comes around do you know you can be discussing with your best friend and you don't know when three hours is gone hello Talk, talk. Something must, a topic must come up. Because prayer is not meant to be a punishment. Now. When you are in conversation with a friend, but you're also in conversation with a Lord, but a realistic. You know, the problem is that you are not listening and there's no speaking. That is why it is a struggle. But if it's a two way conversation, you'll be lost in it. You'll be what? Lost. Lost. Any day you see yourself praying a convent, you are engaged in prayer and it's conversational. You will not know when the time is up. I'm telling you the gospel truth. That's what intimacy does. It makes that time a wonderful time. To married people, it could be the time they come back from work and they shower and they now come back to to maybe joke around in the sitting room. From 6 o'clock, turn your watch, it will be 9 o'clock. But if that marriage is going through crisis, you turn your watch, 6.30, time, not they go. But if, it's, if they are enjoying beautiful time, and they have to go to bed by 8, they can just look around and it's 9. Because there's no time. They'll even be calling you, are you not going to close work by two today? So I can come back and let's see. Because you're enjoying it. But if you're having a troublesome marriage, if you're closing by five, you say, honey, they told me to stay back at work till eight. Let me wait for you. Say, no, 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 no. I don't want to stress you. Just, just go to bed when I come back. <laughs> when I come back, I will, I will, I will just... No, let me wait for you. No, no. I said, no, no. You know, I don't like stressing you. When you want to enter the door, you don't open the door. You don't want disturbance. I'll go and sleep. Wake up immediately. Are you not eating? No, no, no. No. I'll see you when I come back. You are running away. But if home is really home, and not a house, you will enjoy coming back. Because in that place, there is everything. There is comfort, there is peace, there is love, there is fellowship. True or false? Look, God asks men, when they first gave birth to their first children, anywhere they are, their head will be, it's my child. After two weeks, if that child disturbs you, you still love that child, but you want to sleep in Palo. Why? The mother and the child sleeps in the room. But you know, when the excitement is still on, when you are still now, nah, I'm finally a father. You want to come back home and look at that beautiful face. Is that not true? It's true. So prayer becomes pleasurable when intimacy is real. Let me give you an example. Psalm chapter 17, verse 15. But I will see your face in righteousness. Verse 15. When I wake, 
I will be satisfied with your presence. When I wake, I will be satisfied with your presence. HCSB. You see, when you have an intimate relationship with God, as the way you see God, the day I came across this song, that song just gave, the moment I heard that song, I think it was Zubi that sang that song for the first time I heard it. That, who is like you, Lord, in all the earth. It made so much sense to me. I kept on singing that song. I kept on singing that song. I kept on singing that song. Did I hear this song I just sang? This is my daddy, my daddy. I heard it. I wanted to brush it off because of where it was. Uh... But the song kept making sense to me. I had no option than to swim in the song because it made sense. I could understand that. I could understand it. I could understand it. Because of time, I'm going to talk on one more thing, maybe. Intimacy is transformational. Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18 but we all with unveiled what? face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same from what? glory to glory just as by the spirit of the Lord we are gradually changed to become like him on a daily basis when we spend time with him. The more we spend time with God, it is, there is no other alternative than us to gradually start looking like him. This is the point. We really don't spend time with him. We just kneel down and complain. Kneel down and cast and bind. Casting and binding is not intimacy. Kneeling down and complaining and grumbling is not intimacy. Let me ask you, if you're a man here or you're a woman here, and every time your spouse comes back, he's always shouting, yeah, 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 you know what happened today? What will you do? If you have to come back by six, you delay by nine. Because you don't have that strength. Two of us. Now, imagine yourself. The time when you are meant to spend with God and God talk to you, direct you, and open up certain things about him. You are just busy complaining. But I told you, listen carefully, let me show you what it feels like. You are talking to God. And just look at what you, you are doing to your husband. Day one, honey, I told you, get me, I want, I want, a, I want a car. When I want a phone, when I want a high heel, when I want a wig. How many things now? Four. You have not said, honey, you are looking handsome today. You're fine, no? You see the way you are shining. You know? You've not said all this. Day two. Honey, half of my phone now. The wig now. See my friend, he has wig. How do you see? Other people are using iPhone 14. I'm just using 13 Pro, Pro Max. Honey, about the shoe now. Day three, day four, day five, day six. My brother, that's when you will know that you are completely finished. Two of us. You are complaining, you are grumbling. And the man will one day wake up one day and say, wait, 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 calm down. You think I'm deaf? You, the first day you said it, I did what? 
I heard you. Sometimes you are even complaining as something the Lord has prepared as a surprise for you. You are still complaining. Some of you, when your husband wants to put up a surprise for you, you already know because of the way he's moving around the house. Because you know him. You know him. You know him. You know your husband. Some of you know your, your, your spouses. You know when you tell him something, just by the response, you know whether he will do it or not. You know him. You complain. You bring about this matter 10 days in a row. What is your problem? God is not deaf. Enjoy time with him so that you will enjoy the real benefit of companionship. Companionship is not about begging. It's not about making requests known. There are certain things you will even do. Your husband will call you. Hey, what do you even say you needed? Someone needs to listen to what I'm saying here. There's something you can do after you say, wait, wait, come. What is that thing you've been talking about? Some of them who are even good husbands, of which God and Christ is even better than any good husband anywhere. You say, I saw something on one lady, but I know it will fit you more than her. What is it? When I'm going tomorrow, I'll just get it for you. Sometimes they won't get it and keep because he's a good husband. You don't trust God. You don't trust God. You just open your mouth. <laughs> He, the scripture told us that he knows our needs. He said he knows our needs. Your need is not the reason for intimacy. It is the transformation you receive with the relationship and fellowship. He said we are transformed. into the same image from glory to glory and then in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1 and 2 it says that we should be imitators of Christ you cannot imitate someone you have not seen if you want to imitate a voice you cannot imitate someone you have not heard is that true? hello? you must have seen or heard somebody before you can imitate so being imitator of Christ, you must see him and hear him. By constantly being with him, hearing his voice, you cannot help but start behaving like him. One day, I remember a while, some years ago, 20... What was that? I think 2014, I went to Abuja with my sister. To my sister's place. And that was when she had only one child. The first daughter, we were in the sitting room. For three days, the man of God was subjected to watching Cartoon Network because that was what the lady was watching. Man of God started liking Cartoon all of a sudden. And this girl would talk, I would talk back to her. All of a sudden, I started talking like this girl. I said, No. You know why? I've been there. So by interaction, by still, you want to go and sleep, she will sit on your head. The last time I went with Pastor Amy, they will come, I can walk the room, I say, go downstairs, someone is downstairs. They will go to disturb him. I will go upstairs and close the door. But I understood when you are in close proximity, you pick up the character Say, do not say, let them not deceive you. If you like, do anything. Even communication will corrupt good manners. But so it is with righteous communication. When you are with God, you cannot com you cannot compromise God. But God can give you his virtues. His righteousness will swallow up whatsoever is impure in you. When you say they are not changing, it's because they are not close with God. They're not close. They're not close. They're not close. This is what this is. See, the intimacy in prayer, this is, this is the end point of it. Transformation. Transformation. Now, lives have been changed. Now, it is in you building that character that gives you power. Oh, someone doesn't understand me. 
Someone who doesn't understand me. You see, oh. Okay. If you if you read just like I said in Matthew chapter eleven, you will hear where Jesus said that we should learn of Him. How will you learn of someone you don't know? You have to learn of Christ. He will teach you. He will put you through things. You are learning from Facebook more than you are learning from Christ. When you get certain topics, sit down and tell the Holy Spirit to help you. This thing. What do you think about this thing? Life will become so easy. Now, listen carefully. In this transformation, this is where I'm going to end. One of the qualities we get when we become like God is love. Someone say love. The more we get to know God, the more his love overshadows us. That is why I've always said this, that a man without love that claims to love God and claims to know God and claims to speak God's word and does not have love does not know God one of the first things that happens to us in a real relationship is that he fills our heart with his love he fills it with his love if you want to know one of the people who know God really can check their dose of love. Because this is one of the first things Christ does. He fills your heart with what? Love. Fills your heart with this love. You become compassionate, you become kind towards others. So love is the fulfillment of the law. Then that is why you will never get any satisfaction until that action is backed off from love. Come, come and buy a car, you will never be satisfied with it. Go and build a house, you will never be satisfied with it. You will be happy, but there is something called satisfaction. Go and check in anything you have, you have felt, ever felt satisfied. There is, a, there is an expression of love in that. There is an expression of love. Go and check, sit down and check what I'm saying. Any action you've ever done and you feel satisfied, go and check there. There is what? An expression of love there. He's making the scriptures very clear and bare to you. I will not be reading uh, I think uh, give me my hand held. I will close up with this. I have a lot. Maybe we'll start next week again. Know Jesus for yourself. Make Jesus your friend. Let Jesus reveal himself to you. Genesis chapter 3 when man fell maybe I'll use this analogy and close when man failed and then he came to the town of Cain and Abel and God accepted the offering of who? right? and rejected the, the offering of who? Guess what happened in that scripture? Do you think it was that action that made God bring us upon heaven? And that's going to be an assignment. Go ahead and read carefully. When God came and gave and showed him bare his sinful nature and heart. That was what God came for. 
The next thing Abel did was to respond in anger. Cave did rather. Was to respond in anger. This is what happens to us. When Jesus comes to us, he does not come in condemnation, but he comes in conviction. But how do you respond to this love? This is the reason why people are transformed and the reason why people are not what? Transformed. From the beginning. If Cain had felt broken for what he had done, there would be no problem. He felt anger. Then he decided to be an enemy of God. The end point of every intimacy is to know God. It's not to wield power. After all, there has been a drop load of power across the world before Christ was even revealed. And after Christ was revealed, there are still people who will experience power in dimensions we will never know. Or even explain who have not even seen Christ revealed. Are you listening to me? You, have you not seen unbelievers wield natural gifts? Oh, don't lie. Let's not lie to ourselves. So you see, intimacy is about transformation and becoming more like who you are with. I want to be like you. I want to be changed into your image from glory to glory. So when I spend time in your word, I spend time praying. The end result is not when I say, everybody falls. The end result of that word, of that prayer, is my life first. And if I was bitter, that word changes my heart to sweet and beautiful heart. Are you listening to me? If I was impatient, because that love is already me, you know, love is patient. Love becomes patient. Are you listening to me? Yes. So when I stay with Jesus, there are some of your friends, when you sit with some of your friends, you, even without you telling them to tell you the secret, you start picking up some secrets from them just because you are with them. Is that not true? Some of you learn things just by looking at somebody. Let me tell you, if I wake you up, if, I, if I'm going up and you're my neighbor and we work at the same place and for two weeks, three months, I'm going to work and picking you up by 8 o'clock, the day I will not come by 8 o'clock, you will be the one to call me because automatically you start waking up by 8 o'clock. Start coming to work by 8 o'clock. This is what happens to us. Jesus gives us. You know, Jesus does not receive from us. He's a one-way thing. The transformation is the one waiting. Someone say transformation is the one waiting. Worship is the one waiting. Someone say worship is the one waiting. Can I tell you why is the one waiting? We cannot receive God's worship. God receive our what? But transformation is the one waiting too. We cannot transform Christ, but Christ can do what? All these things happen in intimacy. Stand you of it.